Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss La La Land, starring Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, John Legend, and Rosemary DeWitt, directed by Damien Chazelle. Now before I get into this movie, I did see this movie in theaters quite a few times, and I'm not usually one that gets that goes to see a particular movie a million times, well not a million times anymore, but like maybe around like like less than 10 times, and that's how this one did. But this one, in a way that it showed me that it was just, it just felt good. Let's get into this movie and we'll see what I'm talking about. We open the movie with the musical number in the middle of a freeway in Los Angeles, California. And for anyone who doesn't know, I'm not a fan of musicals on the big screen. Because whenever they're in the middle of a dialogue, all of a sudden they burst into song, which annoys the daylights out of me. And that's why I didn't do the Mamma Mia series. But I didn't mind it as an opening scene in this movie. As the shots in the freeway was great to look at as this movie is very well made. But... I wish this one best picture instead of Moonlight. Because remember that whole situation thing where they thought this, the two elderly people thought, Bonnie and Clyde thought that, that this one won the best picture when really it was Moonlight. I wish it didn't go like that, but anyways. We started in the winter with a POV of Mia, played by Oscar winner for this role, Emma Stone working at a coffee shop while is a struggling actress as she goes through one audition after another and doesn't get any acting roles while going to a party with her roommates as she hates it and walks into a restaurant with a guy who we'll get to in his POV in a minute, pushes her. Now, I honestly know what Mia is going through as I didn't land any acting roles in Broadway shows, TV shows, or movies for that matter. As it might be too late for me, I will say. And I really like the character Emma Stone plays in this movie. As she deserved the Oscar for this movie. Now we get a point of view of Sebastian, played by Ryan Gosling. As he drives by Mia and goes to a drive through to eat at a new place near where he plays the piano. While his sister Laura, played by Rosemary DeWitt. And his performance drove me nuts, because he's not very good in this movie, in my opinion, but he sure can play the piano, and he plays the piano at the restaurant owned by Bill, played by, played briefly by J.K. Simmons. And as he plays Christmas songs, he goes to his own tune, and Bill fires him on the spot while it's Christmas time. And I don't really like the character Ryan Gosling plays, as he sh shoves Mia, and if it's the... And if, and if this movie belongs to anyone, it's Emma Stone's movie. Come on, just admit it. It's springtime, and Mia meets Carlos as she sees Sebastian and requests a song called I Ran, where she dances in front of Sebastian and shows herself off as they officially meet for the first time. And they do have chemistry, but at the same time, I don't want them to get together at the end of the day, if that makes sense. I know this is going to sound really cruel, but it's unfortunately true. Sebastian grabs Mia's car keys and they walk together and at some point stops by the bench as Ryan Gosling unfortunately can't sing. But as we see later in the film, Emma Stone can sing better than he can. But they sing a song while tapping their feet together, which is a beautifully shot scene as we get quite a view of Los Angeles while the sun is setting. As the production design is great in that scene, and Sebastian gets Mia in at the coffee shop as she gets off in the next 10 minutes, and the ch they chat and walk around Warner Brothers Street as we learn her grandmother was an actress in the movies years ago, but she confesses to Sebastian she doesn't like jazz, and he takes it, her to a jazz place because... Because he loves jazz and wants to introduce her to better jazz than what they hear in the elevator music, for example. Where jazz is playing is a way to communicate with jazz. And Mia gets a second audition for a TV show and he plans on taking her to one of the shows for research purposes. And Sebastian leaves happy and dances with the woman while her husband was there. Which was sweet and I like the dialogue as it is well written by director Damien Chazelle who does a good job at making these actors believing in this dialogue, as well as the music. The second audition goes by quicker than she thought as she gets home and Carlos gets her to 
a dinner she completely forgot about while Sebastian waits for her outside and Mia is bored out of her mind and runs out of the restaurant and breaks it off with Carlos and goes to the location of Sebastian, which is inside a movie theater somehow, and go to a museum where the movie they were watching was filmed at. And I really like these scenes as they're once again such beautifully shot scenes as the movie was is well made. And their chemistry is cute, but again, I don't want them to end up together because he's all wrong for her. Summertime comes and Mia writes a one-woman show and Sebastian picks up Mia as they're now dating and go to summertime locations all over L.A. as he performs in a jazz club. And they celebrate Sebastian's success until Keith, played by singer John Legend, is as he's good in this movie, comes up and says hello. Mia tells Sebastian about her play as she thinks about calling his own club's Sub's Jazz Club. And they're happy with their successes, and Sebastian decides to get some extra money and with Keith and his band as they practice. And Sebastian wants to save jazz, as Keith believes it's the future, while he writes a song both he and Mia sing together, which is a pretty song. And eventually Mia quits her coffee shop job to get her a stage to perform her one-woman show while moving in with Sebastian. And I really enjoyed the editing go how the editing goes as a romance story as I was never bored with this movie and that's probably why despite it's 2 hours and 8 minutes long that's probably why I ended up going quite a few times Mia goes to a concert and is Sebastian happy about the music sounding maybe or maybe not as Mia thinks this isn't like him joining the band that's not a jazz band but I do like the music and the concert scene, and at the same time, I do agree that with Mia, it's not like him. That's why he's a terrible boyfriend to begin with. We get to fall time as Mia is worried about Sebastian as she hasn't heard from him in a while until she comes home and sees a, he surprised her with a dinner before he has to go on tour with his band in Boise, Idaho, and he asks her to join them there, and they end up having a disagreement about their own dreams and how successful one life is than the others. And this scene's dialogue is depressing, sure, as Sebastian doesn't want to follow his dream anymore, as he has a steady job that's not particularly his dream, and she leaves. And I didn't necessarily cry for them, because they are a cute couple, as I said before, they... As they are, and I did I cry in this movie? No. Mia has a the one woman show going on while Sebastian has to miss opening night because of a photo shoot with his band, and she's sad about it, sure, as well. And she goes back to Nevada, where she came from, and they unfortunately break up, which is something I'm sadly expecting because Sebastian is a jerk from the beginning of this movie and I and he's all wrong for her and I didn't want them to end up together by the end of the day. That's why I said earlier that that I didn't want them together by the end of the movie. Sebastian gets a call for Mia as she gets an audition for her a huge movie thanks to her one woman show as he comes to her hometown and tells Mia about the audition in person. And she's still hurt by the previous auditions, and she reluctantly goes with him back to L.A. for the audition as she tells a story from a song. And this is the scene where I think Emma Stone sings very well done, as it's such a good song. And I really like how the song goes and sounds because it sounds beautiful. In a, and if a different actress sang this particular song, it would have been as flat as Ryan Gosling's performance in this movie. But it would have been not a great movie like it is already. We move on to winter five years later, and Mia is a successful actress with her with a husband and a daughter, while Sebastian owns a clubhouse, which took him long enough, as his sister, Laura, from the beginning of the movie, has a kid of her own, and we see a postcard, and we see Mia's daughter with a babysitter named Chelsea, and they get off the freeway to get dinner, where they, where do they end up? At Zeb's clubhouse. And Mia sees Sebastian performing the piano and following his dream on stage as he pl and he plays when we go back to me a memory of how all this would have turned out with which is a kiss 
while Sebastian gets fired from the restaurant. But Bill, a.k.a. J.K. Simmons' character from the beginning of the movie, and everyone in the restaurant snapping their fingers like Bill, including Bill, for that matter, and they let them, and they let them go into their own paths as they would have got married and had kids of their own, and he would have been... He would be at the one-woman show Mia did earlier in the film, and they would have traveled around the world together, but nope, we get the reality that was the movie presented to the audience on screen, and I didn't mind the climax because they didn't end up together as people hated this climax because they should have been together by the end of this movie, but honestly, Sebastian was too much of a jerk for half the movie, so I didn't really mind it too much. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.8 .8 out of 10. This is one of the best musicals I've seen in years as it caught me by surprise as it was pleasant. And the movie is beautifully shot and well made and no wonder I saw this quite a few times in theaters. And I relate with Mia more than Sebastian as Emma Stone did deserve the Oscar of that year. And I honestly wish this movie won Best Picture of the Year 2016 instead of Moonlight, which was a really good film, sure. But I like this one better, and the chemistry between the two lead stars was sweet, but at the end of the day, I'm kind of glad they didn't end up together despite they have good chemistry together because Ryan Gosling's character was a freaking jerk for about half the movie. The movie is well made and beautifully shot, and I do like the attraction between the two stars. Other than Ryan Gosling's terrible performance, Emma Stone and director, De director Damien Chazelle as well as the cinematography and production design makes this movie a strong recommendation. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time I will be back with The First Man, the biopic of Neil Armstrong, and until then...